Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fares Kayale and Peter Purgatofer. We're going to talk a little about how we designed the game from which you just saw this, this little video. The video is a, a matchup between the two of us, and um, we are from the Institute of Design and Assessment of Technology uh, at Vienna's University of Technology, and uh, we did this game in a joint project um, with the, uh, yeah, there it is, uh, in an academic project which had many disciplines in it. Uh, it had, it's headed by uh, the Department of Communication Science and it has political scientists in it, um, computer scientists, game designers, and also we need company Platogo who did a great job in, in making the game. Um, and the game Your Turn is a video editing game for social impact. It's a community on Facebook and a creative uh, social impact game at the same time, uh, where the main thing you do is edit videos together with other players. Um, the format you just saw, it's one minute long mashups of uh, content you can get from YouTube. So uh, what you basically do is you have a given topic and you can have somebody who already started the video and you can just uh, pick it up and go over to YouTube and uh, search there and see what might be interesting and what might fit uh, with a short segment somebody else already posted. And as you go, you, um, you take turns in posting 10 second clips from YouTube, uh, which then result in this one minute long uh, versus matchup that you just saw. So, um, What's important is the, the gameplay is asynchronous, so you uh, don't have to be online at the same time, so you, can, you have 24 hours to respond. And the, the interesting thing we, we did is that uh, you don't know who you're playing against until you're finished. So the, the, the magic moment of the game is in the end when you have finished your one minute video, the curtain is lifted, and then you can see uh, who you've played with. So uh, I've just revealed my identity as uh, I've given you my nickname, slightly embarrassing, um, but that's a little what the game is about. It's about to, to, to look behind uh, who was your, your opponent or who you have played with and to, to get people to be curious um, um, who they've played with. So what you do then, so that's the last step, is and you watch the YouTube video and you uh, cut out the segment just by recording. Um, so that's a short introduction to the game. The uh, research project is called Serious Beats. Um, it also has a longer title, which you can see here. Um, and uh, perhaps to, to explain a little why we are doing this. Um, in a preceding study in Vienna, Austria, it was shown that, uh, that youth in Vienna tend to segregate into, uh, into very homogenic uh, minority groups. So, um, these, these groups are homogenic in terms of ethnicity, in terms of gender, in terms of age, place of residence, and there is very little communication going on between those, those, those groups which have very, very hard boundaries. And the, the general idea or the motivation for the project was, can we make a game that 
that, that can soften these boundaries, that uh, gets used to communicate ac across ethnic borders, sorry, um, and, and can uh, show them that it's interesting to communicate with others. Um, the goals of the project are, are twofold. There's one uh, very formal goal, uh, which is to really extend the social networks of the youth that are playing the game. So um, this is the tool we are using to, to evaluate the social networks where uh, you can see uh, friends and peers of, of, of the, the desktop object uh, arranged in this uh, left-hand side of the image. Um, and that's the, the very ambitious goal of the project, is to really uh, get some new people in there through playing the game. Um, the game is played for three months, that's our uh, evaluation period, which just, just ended. And right now we're in the middle of, of evaluating what, uh, what we got out of it. Um, the, the second goal of the project um, is a little more sublime or sub subliminal and it's also, I guess, a little more realistic. And it is about to, to, to influence everyday behavior and to influence attitude and to contribute to intercultural exchange and to acculturation. So that's, um, that's something that's uh, a bit harder to measure than the, than the first goal, but also something that's, that's much uh, more realistic to accomplish. Um, perhaps let me take a minute to, um, to stick with the term of acculturation because I think it's a very important term. Um, very often uh, the process of integration is in a way understood as one culture assimilated by another culture. And that's also something that's uh, idealized in politics. And that's definitely not what the game is about. The game is about the process of acculturation, which means two cultures approaching one another and, and creating something interesting and new and compromising along the way and having new interesting things coming out of it. And the, the basic premise of the project was to uh, let music be the means of acculturation because music is something that, uh, that does this quite naturally. Um, think of remix culture, of, of exotic instruments being used in different musical styles. So. We built uh, the game upon the, the idea that, that music can, can plant this idea of acculturation into people's minds way before uh, it happens consciously. Um, had we not chosen music, we, uh, we might have chosen food, which, is, uh, which Mary Flanagan has done in, in Massively Multiplayer Mushu, which is also a very interesting project. So. Um, so back to the project. and. Peter will shortly tell you a little about how we approach the design of the game. Um, in our pre-study, we found out that almost all of the youth in Vienna are on Facebook and that YouTube has become their primary means of music research, music consumption, sharing music. And so, from YouTube, we have come to your turn. And Peter, it's your turn. <laughs> okay. So, now, now that you know about the project, let me tell you about what the what we think that the primary or the most important um, uh, properties of the game are. So um, one thing is that there's only gameplay as a means of communication between the players. We don't have any back-channel communication. There is no chat. You don't even know who the person you're playing with is. You can just add a piece of video to an, a mix, which makes it exclusive for you two, for the two of you. And um, so they um, uh, add mixes. And that's the only way of communication they have. So, um, playing means communicate, com communicating with each other, and that is um, also something that you find in a lot of videos, where you see points of interest or points of um, meaning uh, added um, uh, sequentially. So the second thing is that what happens is that you negotiate meaning. Um, through this process, while playing and while rating each other's creation, uh, creations, you um, 
try to find out what does the other person think this means and what do I think is an adequate response, which also leads to your, you and yourself reflecting on um, the things you use and the videos you choose um, to add here. You choose clips according to your cultural background, which usually includes this globalized meme culture, um, like, like lolcats and, and the fail videos and the memes of the day, but you also choose them from your own background. This is a little bit like um, um, draw something where the process of interpretation, what does the other person mean, um, relies heavily on knowing that other person. Now, you don't know the other person, so you have to um, de deduct the cultural background from the videos you see. Um, one more thing is that we, we labeled these matches, these matchups as um, verses, which is like the language of uh, DJing and VJing. But in, in effect, what you do is you play together. So what starts off as a competition turns into cooperative play, because in the end you have done something together, and all the points that these videos, these mixes will um, receive, both of you get. So um, it's something that you start doing against somebody else, but in the end, you did it together with somebody else, you, and you can um, get to uh, learn to know who it is. Um, and that's probably the, most, the, the, the core point uh, of this whole game design process. You, um, by playing together with somebody you don't know, you might find things about other persons that you never would have expected. I don't know, you like... Um, Spongebob, and you're the only Spongebob fan in your little group, in your little homogeneous group of friends, but there's somebody else who loves Spongebob in some, some, some other group, and he's as alone as you are. So um, there's this bridge being formed between two groups. <laughs> or maybe it's Lady Gaga, or maybe it's, um, I don't know, something else. So um, we tr the game enables kids to build these bridges between groups and find people whom they might connect with on a very unexpected level and which they later might want to get to know um, deeper. And finally, we think that the game... Oh, oh yes, ah, I forgot. Um, so we also try to take the game and put it into real life uh, or in the rest of life or into actual life um, by making parties and um, by inviting the uh, rock and roll people who have like this mobile music um, studio and um, they um, invited the kids to play the game in the bus which has all the, the necessary equipment and this worked very well so for the youth workers um, the game was a brilliant tool to get kids to reflect on their own usage of, of um, internet culture and um, also to get in contact with each other. Um, and so finally what we think is that um, not finally. <laughs> so you also express your identity with this game. And the, there's not much time left. So finally, what we think is that um, there is a um, by reflecting your use of media, your media literacy will grow. You um, gain competence and um, understand better the way media works. So. The question might, that you might have is, is, did it really work? And, and the answer is not, is, is not there yet. We are in the middle of, of evaluating it, and I can give you um, a, few, a few pointers um, what's going on. And, and I showed you the social networks in the beginning, and, and what, we, what we are seeing is some small changes to these networks, which is, uh, which is great, of course. Um, but but the, the much higher potential is in, in in using the game in, in use work, just like Peter said, uh, especially because it helps uh, taking things to, to actual life and, and helping reflect them in the context of your actual life. And, and the evaluation will also shed light on, on, on these tendencies, how uh, cultural perception has changed and, and how the, the mind ideally has opened up to, to new perspectives and new friends you might, might get. So, uh, and what we definitely know is that, that we have uh, great creative things coming out of the game. And I'll just show you one video. Um, thank you for your attention. No. <laughs> you, can, you can approach us and we're going to show the video if you want.